Hey all my Crimsonites and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel where we embrace our femininity, increase our womanly values, and celebrate our brothers. So join me on our feminine journey to learn, heal, and grow. Hey there my Crimsonites and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel. I'm your hostess, femininity coach and author the Crimson Cure and this is my perspective. So you know, I've been seeing a couple of videos floating around and it just caught my attention because I've seen just a few different videos saying the same thing. And it isn't anything that we haven't heard before, but I'm gonna let you listen to the video and then we're just gonna chat a little bit about this topic. Here we go. So I seen a man say, ladies, why does our sense of discernment <laughs> always tell us when a man is being unfaithful but it, it never tells us when a man is unhappy and i ain't gonna lie it kind of made sense we don't be seeing that shit coming but <laughs> we can tell when that mofo is cheating ladies all right y'all so i seen a man Okay, so this isn't the first time we've heard this sentiment. I'm pretty sure those of you who are listening have heard this sentiment before. And to the point where it's like women's intuition is a joke or it's not a real thing. Let me, before I get into the subject of this video and talking about those things, let me just say intuition in and of itself, whether it's women intuition, just intuition in and of itself is an actual thing, right? People have discernment. You have a gut feeling. Everybody gets that. That's not something that's necessarily specific to women or specific to any one group of people or one gender. If you are, you know what I'm saying, in tune with certain things, sometimes you get a gut feeling. Sometimes you get a hunch about something. It could be anything that would be intuition. Now, to get to specifically women's intuition. Um, it doesn't have any bearing or any credence when we're talking about hyenas. And the reason why I'm saying that is because if you don't have good spiritual value, you can't have good discernment, period discernment in and of itself for both men and women is rooted in the spiritual value. That's number one. So if you're not a person that's in tune, right, spiritually, you're not a person that's at peace, or you're not a person that can objectively look at things or have a good perspective about things, if your perspective is rooted in negativity or is rooted in whatever is rooted in that's not good spiritual value, your discernment going to be off and not just about relationship matters, but about just about everything. Your discernment is going to be off. You're not going to be a very good judge of character. You're not going to be able to discern different situations and whether or not you should be involved uh, or what you should be doing. So discernment is a good, that comes from good spiritual value. Num that's, let's just start there. Okay. Anybody that's got decent discernment has should correlate to have decent spiritual value as well. So the level of your discernment or the or the accuracy of your discernment rather depends upon how spiritually in tune you are with yourself, with other people, with your environment, the environments around you. With that being said, Let's get to the actual crux of what was said in this video. Why is it that all y'all chicks be knowing? Y'all always say that I knew he was cheating. I knew, you know what I'm saying, that he was with another woman. And true enough, you can have that inclination. It can be an inclination, maybe, maybe. But you never know or you never understand or you were blind to the road that led to the breakdown of your relationship. If your relationship is gonna break down, then there was a process to that. 
it didn't just happen one day, all of a sudden, everything was good. And then all of a sudden there was a breakdown. Breakdowns come to a head, which indicates that there were things breaking down all along over a period of time. And so why didn't you at any time have the inclination or have the discernment or have the quote unquote intuition that you needed in order to pick up on the fact that your relationship wasn't really going so hot and that there may have been things that needed to be addressed in the relationship in order for the relationship to get better. Right. And it and it doesn't have to even really deal with cheating. Let's let's get off the cheating for a second because y'all love that. Let's get off the cheating for a second. Just the condition of your relationship to begin with. I find that a lot of women believe that 100% of the emotional work of the relationship belong to the man. That is both of y'all. That is, that is both of you all's job. That emotional workload of the relationship is equally or should be equally shared by both you and him. You have an emotional work to do in the relationship to help maintain it or help it be maintained in good status. And he also has emotional work that need that he needs to do to make sure that the relationship is maintained in good status. So there's no one thing. There's no one person that has to do all of the emotional work. Right? Because you both are within the relationship. So you're both there. So the relationship is, is only going to be as good as you both make it. Or it's going to be as bad as you make it. Right? Apathy, not paying attention to each other is not paying attention to the relationship. So it may fall apart over time. You have to keep finding value in one another in order for a relationship to actually work. But I'm not going to get too deep there. We're going to come back to the whole women's intuition thing. Y'all, and it's not even that, I don't even believe that it's you all didn't realize that the relationship was in trouble. I think a lot of you either fall into the category of not caring that the relationship is in trouble or feeling like if the relationship is in trouble, it's not your job to fix it. Especially if you can justify or rationalize that whatever's going on in relationship um, is his problem or he started it or he's the root of the problem, then you definitely don't feel like it's your responsibility at all to contribute to getting the relationship back on track. So therefore you leave it broken and you complain, you might complain about things, but you don't take any active role in trying to support a resolution within your relationship. Instead of talking and then that talk end up as an argument or ends up as accusatory, oh, well, the relationship is going like this, is going like that because of you, because you do blah, 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 or you don't do blah, 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 or whatever the case may be. And, and it may be a true thing. But you also have to be mindful about how things are brought because nobody wants to feel attacked. So when people feel attacked, they start defending themselves. And if they're defending themselves, then that's actively not looking for a resolution. That's trying to be right or trying to make it where your decision, even if your decisions was wrong or your actions was wrong, to make it understandable so that you don't have to be held to task about it. And a lot of women feel like putting a man on the defense is maybe holding him accountable or that's how, that's how you try to resolve the relationship problems. But that's not how the problems are resolved. Because let's just say you accuse him of 
some action or inaction. And let's say he cops to that and say, you know what? You're right. You're right. I do contribute negatively to the relationship in this way. Now, if he cops to it, then what? Right? Because you still got to find a resolution. Him copping to it wasn't the resolution. That was the first step, which is accountability. But at the same time, accountability is not necessarily the resolution. Accountability is the first step on the road to a resolution. See, if you're gonna have, if you're gonna bring things up in a relationship, you got to do that with an agenda, and your agenda has to be clear. You have to have an agenda of we're gonna make this relationship work positively. But a lot of women don't see it that way. They see all relationship issues as something that ultimately the man has to address by himself. Just him, not him and her, because if if he cops to whatever his issues are and then he says, OK, well, this is these are the ways in which you contribute negatively to the relationship. Now, all of a sudden, the conversation needs to stop. Or you don't want to talk about that. But. In more often than not, it take two to tango. So if a relationship is going well, then both of you are contributing positively to the relationship and the fact that it's going well. But if the relationship is going badly or it's turning and it's turning sour and it's turning bad or the, it, the relationship is in breakdown of some sort, then it take two to tango there. One person has to do something really egregious for the break the breaking of a relationship to really be on one person other than that it's both of you no matter if your contribution is small big medium whatever the case may be in in some instance you're contributing to that breakdown somehow and the and the road to the resolution is to figure out how you're contributing to it and then what you can do to correct that action Anyway, jump down in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe to the channel if you have not. Once again, I'm your host, is The Crimson Cure, and this was my perspective. Bye-bye, Crimsonites.